And then, uh, because I hit the button. Welcome to the podness with Space, Pat, and Tiz. Ah, what's up, guys? <clears throat> Welcome to the partners, the show with three friends. We separated by distance, but we connected by brotherhood. We have a weekly conversation that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners. Your boy Tiz, and I'm along with it's the other third of the partners, the Potter Wine here with his Punisher shirt on. And I just added that in so we can give enough time so we can add in the other third of the partners. <laughs> Dramatic pause. It's very long, dramatic pause. Yeah, anyway. Oh, is his face. What's going on? I don't know. The motherfucking face. <laughs> Don't this... hit me his face. He sound like a robot. Computer love. All right. Oh, what's up? We back. It's another episode of the partner. It's episode one twelve. You probably gonna get after one eleven because I'm so behind. Um, personal shit. Uh, we just finished discussing it all fair, but it did give me my topic for the week. So, um. If y'all don't mind, I'm gonna hop off into it. Um, there's this word, right? And I think it is the most difficult word in the English language for most people to actually perform, right? Um, we oftentimes talk about like relationships and like what people need to do to reach resolution. And we talk about politics and wars and this side don't like this and this, that. I think the key to life, right, is this word called acceptance. I'm going to say it again. Not X as in EX, but acceptance. ACC, right? We often talk about like how important it is to forgive or to love or to be nice or to respect or to um, let go, or to whatever, all of these things that we're told to do in the world to like be humans, right? And to like function emotionally, right? But I think one of the hardest things to do is be a person that reaches acceptance. When you reach acceptance, you reach Zen. You reach you reach that nirvana of that place of like everything that happens will happen. So why am I stressing? And when you're not stressing nothing, that's a powerful place to be. Huh. Right? So I think that might be the most important piece of relationships in general. Because I think when you look at relationships, right? A big piece of why relationships fall apart is people put these expectations on them as far as what they want it to be as far instead of dealing with what it is. And when you stop expecting anything from it, when you stop saying, okay, what, what am I going to get out of it? What, what's going to happen uh, me to make me feel good from this? What's going to be the thing that drives, like, when you just deal with it, all right, this is what it is. How do I like and you just deal with that? I think things being done from a more pragmatic place allows for peace because then people aren't like at tugging. It's more of a like what actually makes the most sense. Let's just break that down for that and let's deal with that. But most relationships from a friendship, from a business, from a, a romantic, all relationships, a lot of them they end because one side or the other has some expectations that aren't being met, right? Uh -huh. But I think that what makes relationships that are the best work are ones that come from a place of acceptance. Like, 
I know you pretty much top the bottom at this point. I know what you will do. I know what you won't do. I know kind of your motivations for why you would do something. I know kind of your motivations why you wouldn't do something. And I've accepted all of that. So I have no expectation for you to do anything. So whatever you do is fine with me because I can deal with it. Like we can talk about it. If it's something that bothers me, cool. We just talk about it. If it's something that doesn't bother me, then cool. But it's no expectation on it. So there's no letdown on anything you do to, w around me. You know what I'm saying? Like the only mm -hmm. thing you can do to let me down would be to betray me. But out of 20 some years, if you've never done anything to show me that that would happen, then you feel me? Like that's not even so like there's no expectation set on a friendship. It's like, yeah. all right, we, I know this is solid. I can just rest easy and whatever he do, I can feel confident that we can figure that shit out because it ain't, you know, eh, whatever. Uh -huh. It can't let me down, so eh, it can only be something that we just work through or whatever, but <laughs> yeah, it ain't that big of a deal. And I think that when you get to that, I think that's a big thing. Like, uh, but go ahead. I heard you about to say something. Go ahead. Let that shit. Let me let me let, me let myself breathe. No, no, I think I think you're right about the acceptance thing. So, like, I don't know. I think mentally I've been on that for a while. Like, I have this phrase where I don't expect human another human to human like I human or whatever. Like, like if I'm a nice person. I don't expect the next person to be nice as me or whatever. Considerate, yes. Respectful, yes. Cordial, yes. But I don't expect you to do it like I do it. I, you know what I'm saying? Pause. Just in case that was a yeah. pause moment. Whatever. But this nigga face. <laughs> but this, I, I, I feel like that acceptance it is. It's like I have this it's a <laughs> I, it come across as like I don't give a fuck, but it's really, you know, I take shit for what it is. I don't expect nothing more, nothing less. Uh, I, all I want out of life, I think Rick Ross said this shit. All I want out of life is what I deserve and nothing more and nothing less. That way I don't ever have, how you say, I won't have any disappointments or whatever because I accept everything for what it is, pretty much. Right on. You know what? This leads me to my next piece of this. Like, I think if world wars would end if people came to a place of acceptance. Like, imagine if Israeli and Palestinian. <laughs> oh, here, hear me, hear me. You know what I'm saying? God damn it. This nigga here, man. You fucking ass. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> oh, peep, 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 peep. Imagine if they both accepted the fact that they just had different religions. Like, not putting no expectations on you got to do this because I believe, or I got to do this because you believe. But they just was like, hey, don't nobody disturb this rock. Let's build this here. Let's put this around it too. And let's add this to it. Now, all three of us can hang out here and we can all be cool with it. Imagine if they did that. The power of like not having to be a certain way for others. Yeah. I think Sky Daddy would be pleased, Paul. <laughs> All right, hey, hold on. I'm gonna send y'all another link. We about to restart this. Um, okay. necessarily all the way from the beginning, but uh yeah, we having some technical difficulties, so Pod Squad. Y'all gonna see a chop right here. Hey, Pod Squad, we back. Y'all told y'all it's gonna be a cut right there. Um, so what's going on right now is we record our podcast um on StreamYard. Obviously, we are three, you know, friends separated by distance. So we obviously are not in the same city. Me and Pat are close, but we're not in the same household. So, you know, we we have very different weird ass schedules and lives. So Shit just be all over the place. So anyway, we separated by distance. So we record on stream, y'all. So right now what's happening is uh we had lost audio for Pat. Then we got audio back for Pat. 
and then face dipped out. He was having a delay, but now he's just gone. So we're trying to see what's going on. Um, but this is where what I was talking about comes right in, right? Because we're talking about acceptance, and then immediately you're put in a situation where you have to accept something that's out of your control. Like we can't control the connection for StreamYard. We can't control Wi-Fi signals. We can't control, uh, you know, like if my mic was to blow right now, that would be something that is just I, it, shit. Just be out of your control sometimes. Like you can do everything right and still have an outcome. Can you hear me now? Even, on it, we hear you loud and clear, and you on time, my nigga. Welcome back. Bye, but yeah, so um, like you know, continuing that acceptance thing, I think that's what we just experienced. Uh, phase like shit be out of our control, but we have to accept it. Like, we, I know for a fact that numbers don't be where I think they should be on certain shit, right? And I'm talking about in my in my professional life obviously with us in the podcast and i'm talking about in my personal life just you know my day-to-day life but that could either drive me or it could drop me down and i feel like that acceptance is what makes the difference between you being driven by something you being let down by when you take that expectation off and you just turn it into acceptance like you take that ex away and make that ac happen like it's almost like the X is making you hot, and then you just put that AC on it, and you cool. Now, all right, I can deal with it. I know what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> me, anything outside of figuring it out ain't gonna change it. So let me see. Am I gonna figure it out, or am I gonna just let it happen? And either way, that's accepting it, because you may have a situation where you have to just let it happen. You can't do anything. It's nothing to do. It's just well, all right. So everything else that I can't control, let me focus on that shit. You know what I mean? So I, I think that, yeah. And I'm sure that's going to look weird when we added that around. But Paul, mm. y'all been with us long enough to know shit be wild when we make these things, man. Like, it, this is a gorilla podcast. If you with us <laughs> about getting it out the mud. Gorilla, not Glorilla. Yeah, Gorilla. Like, uh, as in uh guerrilla tactics, as in Swamp Fox Merriweather from the uh war, you know, like you know, just old guerrilla shit. You know, not Gloria Hallelujah Woods. No, not 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 uh not Silver. long face not long face chin bottom. Uh in so face wolf voice. Hit it day, go no more. I could be go no more. Head of day, go no more, head of my no more. Like a female curtain blow. I got a big chin that make the bass come out. It it's like a big speaker right in my face. <laughs> glory, glory, Holly. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Oh, I love you. So, with acceptance, man, uh, I'll let y'all take the floor from there. But I think I just wanted to start off with the importance of that. I think uh, when it comes to relationships, man, like if people could do it more, I'm not sure why it's so hard for people to do. But I find like, I don't know whether it's a Capricorn thing. I don't know whether it's a me thing. I don't know whether it's like a survival instinct thing. I don't even know whether it is the healthiest thing, but I can tell you it's the most peaceful thing. And I feel like that's one of my superpowers, my ability to accept what is like, I get impacted like everybody else does, right? But there's a period of time of me being impacted. And then it's like, all right, yeah, it is hurt. This is this feels great. This feels bad. This feels good. This feels kind of good. This feels mild. This feels spicy. Whatever. Spicy. And then it's like, all right. So now what you gonna do? And I think because I always hit that now, what you gonna do space that allows me to be accepting of most things that happened in my life. Like I remember a time when I was literally living on a park bench, right? And 
I look up. It's the weirdest shit. God always blessed me with a gig, so I'm always making money somehow. But I'm on a park bench. I have a looming investigation going on, right? I've been kicked out of school. And I know it's only a matter of time before I do the dumbest shit and I'm going to end up somewhere, either dead or in jail. Luckily, jail happened and it stopped me from being dead or in prison. Amen. Amen. That's a good way to say it. Look at it. Yeah, that's how I look at it. But so, but I remember being so at peace and happy. I'm laying there with like my clothes wrapped in a coat. Like I got a, it's a Helly Hansen coat. At that time, Helly Hansen was popular. In my area, at least. I got on Nike boots. And so um, I can't remember what type. I think it might have been some Jabot jeans because Jabot's was in. I missed those. And I'm sitting there with like hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, maybe even worth of just throwback jerseys and shit and nice clothes wrapped up in a coat. And that's my pillow. And I'm laying on a park bench. And most people will look at that as their box. Right. And I just look at it like I was so happy. Like I remember going to a party maybe the next day and feel so free <laughs> like all right <laughs> and i think that my i think that that is so important because it makes you not judge people so much it makes you not look at people as like all right yeah somebody might do like it make you have real friends because like otherwise somebody could do something in your friend and that shit pile up over the years and like all the little shit that they done done to annoy you, and that could be a big thing. Be like, man, fuck them. But like, what did they really do? They annoyed me that time. After that time, was I annoyed? No. So why am I putting that in with the rest of the shit? You feel me? I think like it ain't no expectation on the next thing somebody does, and it makes you to have like more authentic relationships because you ain't looking for them to do nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like whatever they do, it's. A experience and you deal with it as such and you move forward and then that just kind of adds another layer to the friendship or the business partnership or the relationship or the whatever it is but it it keeps that weird tension that causes the letdown it causes the anger it causes the get off my land I am this you are that well all right. if I just Get to the point where like hey, you are that. All right. What I'm gonna do about it? Hey, you ain't really bothering me right now. And uh you over there being that ain't doing nothing to me. So uh you have a good day. And yeah, now it ain't no war. Now I haven't sent a missile somewhere. Do you feel me? Uh-huh. That's my theory on life. But yeah. Just wanted to speak to the world about acceptance and see what anybody else had to say. I am complete. It makes you, <laughs> it makes you not be phased by so much stuff that you would normally be phased about. about that. The shit that would normally cause you immense anger at something allows uh -huh. Now just be pragmatic about it and usually I come to it like this all right so look at it like this except th this is a, a analogy for acceptance everything but acceptance is being on social media and going through a problem with somebody a business relationship any kind of relationship right you're going through those social media so you got all of these other outside distractions and things that are like causing you to Think negatively about this situation more than whatever you already emotionally feel as an individual, right? Mm. But if you were to take any two people in the world and put them in a room alone with no audience, there was no way that what happened in that room would ever get out. Most people would probably figure out that shit and it would be such a peaceful, amicable solution to the situation. Because most people would get in that room and realize, you know what? It ain't really that deep. Whatever it is, 
We can figure this shit out. Let's just get pragmatic about it. Let's just deal with it. All right, cool. Cool. All right, let's go out in this, out in this world and go on about our business. But it's the shadow of your mind or the world or whatever it is that causes you to not accept things and to put expectations on things and for you to be like, okay, I need this person or this thing to be like this. I need this experience like this. To the thing. It is crushed and I'm disappointed and now it ain't worth nothing. But no, it is worth something. You just climb the phone. It just don't look like that. But look what it do look like. Enjoy that part. Mm. Might be some cool shit in there. You did. Yeah. Yeah, just chill. <laughs> just chill. And just settle down. Settle your hon- monkey ass down. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the fuck is you all? All right. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hey, man, stupid. y'all heard that word. Get stupid. Uh, hey, uh, y'all got anything y'all want to talk about this week? I think I'm done. Uh, shit, this nigga just told me. That's to... <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm just being ad libs, man. This is ad libs. You know, you ever listen to a song, a classic song, and in your no, head, you just no, be like, ants. You want to say that shit? No. 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 You were crazy for that shit. You wildin'. <laughs> no. I, I thought you were going to continue singing. I was continue saying crazy ad-libs in the background. What? What'd you say, face? Somebody got bumps. The more you're able to accept the things in life that you can't control, the better your life will be. Yeah. I think that, oh, what's that prayer? The uh, prayer of serenity? Yeah. That is such a, like, no matter what you believe in, right? Just the tense of that prayer is a really good way to live your life because it makes everything so easy. The shit that's supposed to be crushing is like, all right, yeah, that's what it is. hey, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> okay. no lie. what is that from? I forgot. All right, For so the dude that did a joke and he was like, I think his name was Foolish. He was or something like that. Damn, uh, I don't know. But he had gaps in his teeth and he had a wide mouth. He's like a Muppet. Uh. But he was like, he took a girl to, <laughs> and the girl was dumb and he took her to the restaurant. And then she was sitting up there, like trying to figure out she wanted to order. She was like, I want a, uh, can I get a, uh, can I get a Kawan chicken sandwich? And he was like, what? Let me look. I think I heard this before. You be Cajun, bitch. And then she was like, well, K Sarah, Sarah, bitch, K Sarah, <laughs> And she was like, oh, Salavi, bitch, say la vie. And I just, that joke for some reason, like, it, I put it on coming to you, and that joke has stood out to me for years because it's just like, it, it just epitomizes the average day to day interaction you're going to have with. Most people like it's gonna be some shit where they just saying some shit and you like what? Oh, this what you? Oh, this what you mean? Oh, why you just say that? I realized the more and more I deal with the the world and like the English language, the more people don't really have an understanding of what words mean. They kind of just use them in whatever way they mean it. But you kind of gotta decipher a lot of language. Like it's yeah, like, especially when I talk. Yeah, anybody. It ain't even <laughs> you. It's just like if you take your general conversation, somebody, <clears throat> nine times out of ten, it's best to lead that conversation by making sure for a check for understanding, making sure you got like a shared meaning. Otherwise, you're gonna leave that conversation. <clears throat> I 
y'all gonna be on two different. It's gonna like you gonna understand it, but the way you gonna interpret it and execute it gonna be way different. Unless you both get on the same page, like, all right, so this what you oh, so all right, so all right, so this is what we now mean, as opposed to this is what I think you mean, and this is what I think it means. Let's do this. You feel me? That's my thought. That's all I have to say. That's all I got to say about that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got, I got the top of the What? I think he's leaving out and coming back in. Oh, uh, okay. Well, why don't we do this? Instead of like playing around with this, why don't we just had this and we just flip it and flip it and smack it and all you know, that shit, flip it and reverse it. I said something in there that was a problem. But um, let's go ahead and just see what time it is. And then we'll come back. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. Yeah, um, it, it is currently 1037, Sunday, January 22nd. This is episode 112. One twelve with the players do well. Yeah, I remember that. Hey, if they're good and vulgar, hey. Good and vulgar, hey. Yeah, yeah. Let me get baby into a soul star. That's that. I gotta stop playing that. One twelve with the players do well. Yeah, I remember that. Good then the deep voice nigga, this is the good fucker. Is that good and fucked around? This nigga trip. Is that good and fucked around? This is officially the longest intro for the good and fucked around. Yeah, man. Do the pod. All right. I'm going to start this good at fuckery off like this. Um, one thing I can... All right. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all. It's the good at fuckery, man. Um, Yeah. We got some. We yeah. Talk that shit, Pat. All right, one thing I can't stand. What I've noticed that I can't stand lately that's happening more prevalent when I go out to places. I can't stand scanning for the for the menu. I hate that. You know, you got to scan the little barcode thing uh, and go on the internet for the menu yeah, and all that other Yeah, the little touchless shit. Now, yeah. I would say that was bad during COVID for us down here. Um in the city, it's probably worse because I don't really go to the city that much. But I understand yeah. it probably is a thing. But I don't. I haven't had to necessarily encounter it as much. But it is annoying as fuck when you just want to like go ahead and pick up an order right then instead of waiting till you download. And then if the Wi-Fi wonky in that place, then it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, this this shit's annoying. It it really is. But yeah, I just would have put that out there. And um, being down here. I um I agree with you, Tiz. What about fast, about fast food and um customer service, man? That shit is trash. That <laughs> this shit is so oh, trash. It is. It's trash as fuck, man. They mad at you for ordering. Like, how dare you show up and want some food? Don't you dare come through your line. And what? I be ordering the simplest shit, and they still be getting it wrong, bro. I be going inside, tell them exactly what I want. Listen. I even write it down in, in, in a text message. 
you know how many times I've been to McDonald's. Watch how simple this is, right? I've been to McDonald's and I order a 10 piece nugget, a large fry, a large fry. And then I order two packs of honey. They charge me for two packs of honey. Now, I understand this. I've taken that into consideration long ago that a restaurant may or may not charge you for honey. It just depends on who working that day. I, I get it. They charge you for sauces. It's a thing. Cool. But why I keep getting honey mustard? It's simple. I said honey. I didn't say mustard. I didn't let an extra two syllables come out. There was no nothing. It was honey. Stop. Hard stop. Just honey. They thought you wished it the mustard. Period. Honey. Terrible. Terrible. And then, then I would check and see if they charging you for honey mustard instead of honey. Because it seems no, like it's, no, that's the shit that involved the receipt. They be charging you for honey. The receipt is in the right thing. Pat. 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 That's all done these for me. Pat. That's this bullshit. <laughs> Say the thing. It say it on. You can check the bag before you hand it to me by just looking at the receipt you about to staple that staple to the bag, because you know they be sticking it to there with the little stickers now. Mm -hmm. And I order my shit offline, so it's a digital receipt and a paper receipt. So it's like a paper trail of this honey. It say honey. It say two times honey. It say honey. It say it on. Ha! It say fucking honey. I want no goddamn mustard. Not no Dijon. Not no sweet mustard. Not no honey mustard. Not no mustard mustard. Not no French's. Mustard no mustard grape yeah. mustard. I don't want none of that shit. I want honey. Lost your mind. God damn it. Mustard. The shit that come from bees. So you want to warm with the bee, huh? Bzzz. Must have lost your mind giving them honey mustard. Go oh, ahead, hex on your whole family. Oh. oh, I'm sorry to go there when we talk about this, but it's the customer service is shit down here. And they don't it's know trash. goddamn ice cream. Fuck you. It is trash. It is it's fucking trash. I gotta go in the outskirts to a, a fast food place. Come on here. I will say this. White There's the white to black um, she always love. Always got slushies and ice cream, and they always got whatever you want right it's this other one though that is the pure garbaggio straight dumpster juice but it's the one out here that's flaming and then everything else out here be pretty good like i will say like they they be like oh you're welcome Thank I, don't, you. I, don't, I don't i don't do fast food in the city i know that much come on, come on here, old boy come on see are right, you got your car down here yeah nigga drive your black ass out here to see me you know i be struggling with this family life shit but I tell you this, mm. we're coming to see you real soon. True. Uh, yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, I got you. Going okay. back to the middle and around again. All right. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, <laughs> next on the fuckery. Um, I'm trying to I'm gonna be there. Is this the second episode we start singing this song? Go <laughs> back to the middle and around again. I'm gonna be there too, the end. Well, I just remember them doing this shit. <laughs> Here, back, middle, round again. Back, middle, round again. This is gonna make me look up the video after the pod. Look, look it up. Middle, round again. Back to the middle and around again. I'm going to be there to the end. 100% pure doves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's no way I'm going to be able to segue into this next topic. 100% pure <laughs> doves. 100% pure paws. <laughs> on, <laughs> on this next topic. Um, Puff Daddy is back in... 
uh, local trending as the the trend. Um, how to say the hashtag P Diddy spelled P E E Diddy. You know, pissed on somebody. Yes, Young Miami. Young Miami has confessed that she has a pissing fetish. She likes being pissed on. So you know how the internet do. The internet takes up and they run with it. All right. Okay. (laughs) He did it. All right. (laughs) (laughs) It's for the content. It's for the content. It is. All right. That's an Easter egg. If somebody can't. He ain't no worse than Glow Willow. Yeah, you well, really leave the um, salad dressing. Yo. Oh, yeah, she, she she used the kids for the salad dressing. Yo, this is... I, I really just think they be saying shit, and they don't really be... No, I think shit really be like that. <laughs> well, Young Miami, I kind of believe Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me <laughs> out. Hear me out, right? <sighs> I'm doing this for the content. This is an Easter egg. If somebody make it to this part of the podcast. I mean, you really listen to the podcast because it's like dead in the middle. All right. So back in Virginia State there was this girl and she was like the greatest fuck buddy of all time, right? All right. And I used to knock the bottom out of shit. But there was this one time where I I guess I had been holding it and didn't realize it, but you know when you fucking you can't pee and you know it, like when you nothing you can't pee you pee you can't nut you know, that shit shut off whatever. right so I'm fucking the shit out of her and she's screaming and she like ah here it comes so she start you know letting off liquids so then I nut. And I'm like, oh, me too. So then I'm letting off liquid. And then right at the end of it, it was just like, I thought I was about to nut again, but nope. I peed all of it. (laughs) (laughs) And she liked it. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've had an interesting life, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, you know, people are into different things. And um, you know was, what? I'm going to say it was in her. This is what I'm saying. Here what I'm here. Here what I'm here. The picture I'm painting for you. <laughs> I can tell you didn't catch all the way that the, the sequence of events here. Oh. No, no. Let me show the work. Let me show the podcast. Yeah. If you watch this squad squad, that bitch, you, really, you really fuck with us. You watched all the way through the beginning and everything. You didn't got through back to the beginning and everything. All right. So this is what happens. This is what the fuckery is for. This me. <laughs> this is her. Uh uh, 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 Goosh, goosh, goosh. Oh, oh, oh. Did she know? Did she realize? Yes. She's like, ah, oh. oh. Do it more, yeah. Oh, so just, she don't even get, she didn't care. She didn't care at all. She was into it. It's so, okay. so I got a little uncomfortable and I stopped talking to her for a while. And then, you know, you know, I just got back with her, but, you know. Look, man, it was a wild time back then, okay? It was a different, mm-hmm. crazy time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Well, Ooh. you know what? <laughs> speaking of, speaking <laughs> of wild times. So, P. Diddy, call me P. P. Tizzy. Oh, that sounds <laughs> worse. 
that sounds so worse. <laughs> Where's face when you need a pause? <laughs> I'm deep in there. Well, from that wild time to this wild time, um, I'm randomly putting this up here because I forgot to talk about it. Um, police woman sleeps with six colleagues in Tennessee. At the same time? Not at the same time. She, had, right. multiple, she had multiple affairs and, and sometimes it was on the office. clock. She was the officer. She was a police officer and she was sleeping with other she police officers officer. in her department. That I've seen that happen. Like, if you think about any place you've ever worked, you know that lady that's that's like passed around and people and all bust at her. And she's still there. You, like, you know that lady. Like, whether you don't work at a Walmart, whether you don't work at a Fortune 500 company, whether you own, like, you know that person if you've ever worked somewhere in an, in an environment where there's a lot of people employed there. So that I get it. Um, I think the weird part is you know it being a cop and you know it coming out, but if you really think about it, like everybody know the office hoe or the job hoe. Oh damn, or you know, you you getting off late from your shift as uh at, at motherfucking Costco and uh, oh you know Becky back there, you know, she be you know the one that run wrangle carts, you know. She we, we 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 talking about the police the female police officer that got trained on by her department face. Basically, oh, she got ran a train on. See, that's different. That's the same time. They, they did all of it. Oh, I know. All of it that you could think of, they did it in a. In yeah. a oh, time. she really yeah. the off, but the still, like, it, it, it was China. That girl, the dorm hole, the office hole, hole, the, the whatever hole, like oh, everywhere. And they did it on the clock, so they well, right now they're fired. But, you motherfucking right, get paid for that shit. If you're gonna be the hole, you might well get double paid. And the husband is uh, sticking with her. This is where our tax dollars going. The yeah. husband is holding her down. Oh, nigga. Ain't no stand by your woman on that. Nah, he's standing by. That's what he currently <laughs> saying. All right. So I'm going to keep it real. When you've been with somebody for a long time, I will say this. You might can stand by your woman on some. You had an affair with a person, right? And you know, or she, or she might can stay with you through that. But nigga, a train, bitch, you is sh she belonged to the streets. Yep, they were all niggas too. They were all black police officers. Oh no, bitch, you done got Donkey Kong. All oh, oh no, oh yeah, I, I think the husband. Are, cut. No. I'm you pretty sure that was the man bingo part. Yeah, um, I, I, with you, you got me fucked up. <laughs> that's my shit. That's my shit. <laughs> that's my shit. You got, got me fucked up. I mean that. Like you're wild. You've you you've overstepped some bounds. Like that's not a mistake. That's a purposeful. You making a Bang Brothers video. What the fuck? What the fuck you mean, whore? <laughs> You were floor. Yeah, that was, that was a cuckold. No, yeah, that she, was a cuckold. Tennessee, man. Tennessee. Oh, no, nah, it was uh, it was some white dudes. It oh, was some you white dudes. You didn't shit about it, though. And the Spanish guy. If I'm single and I'm a slower, I don't care that you're a slower. We can still get it in. But the fact that, what? Oh, you're a slower and I'm mon I'm in this monogamous? Man, please. We are. You might be, you might be a cuckold. We could have just talked about it and had an open marriage for all that. They might have. You got to do it. <clears throat> you think so? You think so? I don't know, man. He He's standing by her, and um, man, this looks like a porn Look, up video waiting to happen. That's if this is an open marriage, there's something wrong. Because I would think that a man like him, if he down with all this, then the open marriage would be him sitting in there watching. He might mm -hmm. even record it. Not he finding out and now he got to hold her down because the public. Man, fuck that. Bitch, we are done. Because mm -hmm. you didn't do it the right way. Like, all things are doable. You want to cheat? 
Let's talk about it. Go do that. I might be cool with you going to do that. We might can have an open situation, but don't do this shit like that. Cause uh -huh. now you see this. My dear. Yeah. But anything that's going to create a public stir uh -huh. or cause them to have to deal with <clears throat> out that interference now you're fucking us up you uh -huh. fuck money and we know about it but the world don't cool you fuck up and say some wild shit to me that hurt me deep but the world don't know about it cool cool you fuck around and do some wild shit like this when well, now the world know about it but we won't on the same page for now we ain't cool But we might be in a place in our relationship where, hey, I'm like, hey, you go out and fuck somebody and I'm going to go out and do the same. And we holler back and we get together, whatever. We might can go to the swingers club together. But it, once you disclude me and let the world in, now you've chosen something different. Now you've created a problem that's it's above me now. It's above me. It's above me now. No, I understand. I understand. It's above me now. Because now it's... I'm not dealing with you. I'm dealing with you and everybody else. Like, we can keep some shit private. That shit come out in public, and now we on the same page because we was already... Hey, yeah, you know, this gonna happen. You know, be aware of this. This gonna come out in the public. We can both get on the same page and rally together on that shit and be at least protected like now at least you ain't gotta feel like oh shit what oh they they said what how they know oh that's what's up this motherfucker told me something different you feel me nah come on mm -hmm. come on that's what anything yo like with business most of the time business relationships get fucked up cause somebody holds something back and do something that ain't like uh -huh. You look at uh artist label relationships, right? You got most of the shit fuck up because the label does something that the artist didn't know about, and then the artist finds out later. Yeah. Or vice versa. It's never been it's never the shit that they both agreed about. They they said, all right, this gonna be the rollout. Hey, this gonna be the PR behind it. They don't know, but it don't that don't be the shit they be mad about. They be mad about because Vibe got an interview with this producer and he done said, Well, you know, this nigga that signed to me, he this, that, and the third, and now this nigga finding out about it from Vibe magazine or whatever the source is. I'm using an old ass reference, but you get uh -huh. like that's where the fucked up shit become. It don't be on the shit that they agreed upon. It be the shit upon like, oh now I'm getting blindsided from the world on some shit that you could have just blindsided me on in private. Let's blast out yeah. of here. Now we can talk it out. Now whatever goes on, it's me and you. It's like going again, like I said earlier with the acceptance shit, like people going to a room. If it's just me and you and we go into an empty room and it's nobody going to find out what happened in that room, we probably going to come out with a real good resolution and be good. It's when you're finding out about what's happening from everybody else and then we have to have that conversation now some shit gonna be some sparks flying because now you don't got time to be pissed and now you ain't got to deal with just me you got to deal with all these other people talking to you about this shit so you mad over and over and over and over and over and over again true not much and now you are meme on the internet that part oh man now you the Will Smith crying me. Uh huh. You gotta explain an entanglement that you ain't even had. Any, like, bitch, we could have talked about this. I might have been down. I could have went back and fucked my old baby mama. Will sitting there now. He like, damn, I can't do nothing. Bitch. Now I gotta just sit here and take this shit. You could have told. We could have just did this a whole different way. If it was about getting some rocks off, you could have got it. Did that? You could have sold your royal oats. I could have <sighs> did. And we could have came on back. Oh, oh, oats on happy and better for it. 
shit. We could have fucked on the bed next to each other, got our looks in. You don't know what kind of shit I might be into if you give me the chance. I'm nasty like that. You go, man, fuck him. I'm a man, ding, gonna fuck this girl. We're gonna just, ah, ah, you, you like it. Look at this. Hey, this is fun. I'm, I'm kind of nasty. Should I have peed in the bitch? I told you, man, I'm nasty. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> I give people the chance to have these conversations, man. Like you don't know what people might be into if you don't blind. Be the, the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Um, another person wilding in these streets. Um, Hunter Biden. Hunter Ooh. Biden okay. paid a lawyer. He paid a lawyer to tell uh to keep a stripper's a uh, a daughter that. He had a baby with a stripper. It was a, um, he has a daughter with her. And he don't want the daughter to have the last name Biden. So he's paying a lawyer to keep her from getting the name. Why is Hunter Biden be wilding in these streets, man? I don't know. I'll say that one more game. Probably. Hunter Biden, he was he in these got, streets. He, he got, messed yeah. around with a stripper. Got nasty stripper with got that. pregnant. Baby she had a baby girl. And he is trying to get lawyers to keep the baby girl from having the last name Biden. Oh, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Leave that nigga alone. If you gonna be illegitimate, at least had a balls to be Ill- have an illegitimate child with your last name, so you can actually be full fucked up deadbeat. Don't be an asshole and 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 don't don't have nothing to say. <laughs> like stand on that shit. You be. That shit was good. You enjoyed it. The yum yum get them ups. Now stand on it. You pussy man, you. Yeah. You a hunter. You were hunting it. You was look, you was a pussy hunter. Looking for it. Now <laughs> stand on it. Stand on he all. Was just wilding, dog. Like he be he, he get caught on the <laughs> internet with with drugs in the background. No, you, know you the son of the president. Like you like the Bush sisters, you remember them? Mm-hmm. They, they was wilding and acting a hot ass mess when George was in office. That's this nigga. Mm-hmm. Male version. Cutting the fuck up. You need to have some d- dignity, some scruples about yourself, Hunter. Yeah, he's wilding. He's wilding. Um, and- don't be running from your responsibilities out here, dads. If you if you sire a child, go ahead and step up to the responsibility of that child. It don't mean you got to be with the mother. It just means you need to be a dad. You made it. To happen. True. Agreed. That's why I don't have any kids now. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. That's nice. I can't segue this. So it turns out Carol Baskin's dead ex-husband is not dead. He's alive. Um, and the family has came out about it and they just want to put yeah. that out there. So. What is going on? How is he alive? He didn't. She didn't kill him. He just disappeared on her. Where that nigga been at all these? I need that document. I need that season season four or whatever this is a tiger king the carol baskin's husband is backstory what where where has he been what have you been doing he, Nick? like because uh he has a whole, he whole family. He has a new wife he has a new wife he has kids yeah i need all that mm-hmm. why did you leave how did you plan how did you get away and that nobody knows what happened like i need all of that don't be leaving me in the dark mr baskin's Come on, he just man. don't want to show face because it was probably he probably looked at that shit as like uh this is nothing but a circus and I don't want to be involved with it. Pretty much. So yeah. Another circus. Um I'm not sure if people are familiar with this rapper, but uh one of Gucci Mane's artists, uh Big Scar, uh he passed <laughs> away and his brother did a music video at his funeral. I just felt like that was some fuckery. Plus, they 
plus the simple fact that they were trying to get Gucci to get uh get Gucci to give more money than he already sent pretty much. What did he give? Twenty thousand? I think something like that. You yeah. You came by a funeral with that. What you want this nigga in a diamond castle? Sell that nigga jerk. But uh, yeah. I, I don't. I think Gucci did exactly what he should have did. He took care of the funeral like he should have, and that's that. He just didn't give mm-hmm. them. He paid for that shit all right. Don't be, don't be, don't be acting like that. Uh huh. And good. then you're gonna do a music video at the at your brother's funeral. I really miss. Hold on, now. I really miss my nigga. Bum, 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 he changed bum. it right. To... Really miss my nigga. White people, you can sing it too. Just take that M to a W. Really miss my wig. Ah. Uh... Really been my wing. Uh, Nigga. Uh, <laughs> walked over to the bed. Said, Nigga, are you dead? And I was like, No, 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 no. Why you had to go, go? <laughs> go, 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 go. That nigga said, Yeah. He was uh, dead and he still said, Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah, hey, it, it, like, yeah. I'm gone. That shit suspect. Whatever. But um um <laughs> the next thing I got on the list. Um uh, remember last year when Alec Baldwin accidentally shot an extra? But um he's actually getting charged for when a voluntary who? manslaughter for it. Huh? When who is that? Just- Say it again. When who said what? When right. who? Last year, Alec Baldwin um, was oh, making a movie Alec, called Alec. Plus. When I was like, who the fuck is Alec Baldwin? I was like, no, not they- Alec Baldwin. That's their cousin. Alec Baldwin. God damn. Fuck all these damn brothers coming from. But yeah, last year while filming for the movie Rust or whatever, he had a scene where he was shooting, supposed to sh- uh, shoot someone, and it was actually a li- actual live round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the he still get he's getting charged for involuntary manslaughter for the situation, uh, especially since he's actually was like the producer of the film, pretty much, and. Then it is just a simple fact that they actually saw multiple like live rounds in in the area, in the vicinity. Right. Or whatever. So like just because of that, it you know, I mean, not to say just because of that, because in my mind I feel like he should be get charged for something, especially if you also the executive producer of the film in general, like you sh- it should have been multiple checks. Pretty much, you shouldn't even have live rounds in the area. Pretty much, you're shooting a movie, right? I yeah, that's confusing to me. Like, what what were you planning for that you had the bullets in a gun of any kind? Like, what was there a and, target practice he needed to do? Or he needed to see the light? like. I don't understand. And I mean, with today's technology and stuff like that, you really probably don't have no need for any live rounds at a freaking um in a but when you're filming, pretty much. So, yeah, they got hell to, no. to, like show the explosion of the shit and all that. Like I don't understand. Well, what was the live rounds for? That uh-huh. was like a hit. Yeah, but exactly. It's extremely, extremely suspect to me. But yeah, at the end of the day, he's still getting on charge for involuntary manslaughter for it, which I feel it should, he should. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he'll get any type of jail time. Um, of course, he probably gets some type of fine because, you know, when they, the rich has way more um, advantages than if it was a common person doing it. 
very much. So, lowly commoners. Yeah. Pretty much. Whatever. Um, I would also like to take this time in the fuckery to say a big fuck you to uh, Simply Orange Orange Juice. I, I've been drinking that shit for the longest time, and then they're saying that they have it's basically liquid fentanyl. I'm exaggerating by saying that, but they're saying they have high levels of toxic chemicals in it. So, um, along with that, in the vaccine, I am totally mutated right now because of Simply Orange, and I like to say fuck you. And they're getting the class oh, action no, suit. Like- like he drinking Cisco or something. Huh? You made Simply Orange sound like it was Cisco or something. I love Simply yeah, yeah. Orange. Nigga, 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 orange juice is essential yeah. to my well being. You don't remember Cisco? Yeah, I remember. Mm-hmm. Boy, that shit would have you so horribly fucked up. Like, I remember it was never a good drunk. It was all some fucked up shit that happened. I've never drunk that shit. It was never like a happy drunk. It was like a ah, oh, raging maniac. Ah, 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 ah. Was a drunk man. Ah, they make that shit with anger. I was drinking the mango. Eleven, eleven, make a wish. What well, make it so weird? Because if you, you know, was around back then, Mad Dog 2020 was like the same shit almost, but it didn't make you act like that. I used to put that in my Fruitopia bottle and then go to high school with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah you put that shit in it. Yeah, hell yeah. Me and that bitch high as drunk as fuck. In there, cutting up. Nigga, I remember 12th grade. I used to be so fucked up first period. And the shit that was fucked up about it is I'm in there drunk and high as fuck playing basketball because I had basketball first period. So I'm in there sweating like a motherfucker. <laughs> you know how I sweat just off the GP off of it. Oh, it's a little warmer than it should be. It's 65 instead of 64. So I'm already on the way to perspiring on the forehead. But I'm in that bitch. Boy. If it won't for showers and the fact of like having gym clothes, nigga, I used to be in that bitch sweating like fuck for no reason. Like, why did I have basketball first period? And why did my dumb ass drink and get high before first period? I'm in there missing shots, re- rebounds going right past me. I done forgot we on offense. I done went to the wrong hoop to make the layup. There's all kinds of weird shit in basketball. You, you, you were still a better <laughs> basketball player than me, so you're good. That was the fucked up shit. I was fine when I was sober. It's no, time I'm to get drunk. I'm in there low. I'm talking about I'm in there sitting on the bench in the locker room, just staring off at the locker, just into the distance. Just everybody else that went out onto the basketball court to start the class. I'm still sitting in there. Nigga calling my name for the roster. I'm, he looking for me. I'm sitting in there looking stupid as fuck. <clears throat> that kind of dumb shit. Then the nigga was the football coach. So you got P.E. with the goddamn football coach, right? <clears throat> now this nigga, it's basketball, but now this nigga wants you to lift weights. Nigga, <clears throat> I don't want to lift weights early in the morning. I'm pissy drunk, sir. These weights going to fall on me. Ain't no way in the world I'm going to get past these new laws right now. New <laughs> law. Oh, man. I'm just imagining that in my head. God damn it. Uh, what else? Is there anybody else? I think there's no, there's one more person I need to say fuck you to. Ron DeSantis, again, the governor of Florida, blocks African American studies being taught between K through all the way to 12th grade and says curriculum significantly lacks education value. So mm-hmm. a good big fuck you to Ron DeSantis uh, for you. basically pandering to all the the racist whites that's out there in Florida. 
whatever. Because at this point, I feel like he's just, I feel like he's, it's, it's troll politics. I just feel like he's just doing shit to fucking piss people off to make other people happy. That's it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm ending the fuckery off with the fuck you. And um, yeah, that is episode 112. Good and fuckery. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Bitch ass niggas. I don't know. I just went with the fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I'm lighting up too. I'm I'm using my hoop for this this the Fuka thing for this road train here. I know. It comes in handy. <laughs> Face Bob, do you think the internet is sufficient enough for your topic? You like What's going on over there? Huh? What would you say, Face? Damn. Hell no. So yeah, the internet is not fucking with face right now. Exactly. Well, fuck that exactly. internet. Exactly. God it's, damn. I ain't live it. We're gonna just accept it. Damn it. It's a topic huh? for another day. That means we gonna always have exactly. That's all. And since we don't have that topic, guess what? Fuck it. Do we got a black business or no? We about this bitch. We about this bitch, man. We got about this well, fuck it, man. We done talked that shit to him. So now we <laughs> talk about this bitch, then. Y'all got it? <laughs> Welcome to another episode, <laughs> episode 112. Y'all know what the fuck be up. With it's, a place to hell. We done plugged through uh, several internet outages. My monitor done dropped. Power, That's like, all it is. Hey, the Sarah, devil, Sarah, devil been busy this evening. But we did. Yeah. We made it. And it's we gave it. Classic. Y'all know what it is. Uh, as always, man, I've been one third of the partners. This has been your boy, Tiz. I've been along with. It's the other third of the partners, the Padawan here. And I'm along with. Dramatic pause. Internet issues in dramatic pause. That motherfucker face been here. You know what it is. That nigga been winning that race. He been ahead of the pace. And uh, he would say some other cool shit right there. But I ain't as uh, cool as him. So I'm going to leave that space there. But uh, I will say. And he's ahead of the race. Send us money if you want to support the podcast. You know what I mean? It's First of all. Man. Oh. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Yes. You, you know his face, damn it. God dang. His face, man. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Oh, God damn, nigga. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it came through a Christmas walk, did it? <laughs> ah! His face, man. I'm going to dash a motherfucker. Uh... But yeah, man, y'all know what the fuck be going on with our shit, man. My monitor went drop tonight. I don't know what the hell. We done had to restart like three, four times. It's been one of them days. It just one of them days. But uh, anyway, man, yeah, it's been us. And uh, if you want to send us some money to support, dollar sign partner tiers one or buymeacoffee.com backslash the partner. Uh, you can also go to uh, anchor.fm slash the partner, the hyphen partners. Or to Spotify and just type in the partner, and you can support monetarily there. Um, if you want to, if you want to get some shit for your money, face how they gonna do that. Uh, shit just keep fucking up. Go to the stove. <laughs> <laughs>
Just say that face. Go to the stove. All right, well, if y'all want some shit and y'all want some shit back for your money, man, go to rtreclothing.com, rtreclothing.com, A-R-T-R-E, clothing.com, A-R-T-R-E, clothing.com. The A-R-T-R-E part is the part that's important, so that's why I keep spelling it and stopping there. I ain't about to spell clothing for you. Face would never do it for you, so I damn sure ain't about to do it either. Uh, We're going to respect that tradition. And, uh... Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, those are all the ways that you can financially support. Yeah, then, and then uh once again if you Y'all see what it is. Pat, if they want to get in touch with us, how they gonna do that shit, Mike? At at sign. T H E P O D N A S at sign T H E P O D N A S. That's the Twitter. That's the Instagram. That is also the Twitch, and that's also the TikTok. And on Facebook, we're Tiz Face Pat, all the partners. All of us, man. Just got a microcosm of my whole fucking life right now. Just accept. Shit gon' come. Shit gon' go. Shit gon' act crazy. Shit might not flow. Internet may go, people may go, but we're going to always still be the partners. You're going to still see them three cartoon and real faces in front of y'all every week. And we're going to keep on talking that shit to y'all, man, because it's us. And that's just what we do. We accept, we move on, and we bring y'all that hot shit that we see our next week, bitches! <laughs> Peace, motherfucker. And we out.